Call to order the uh, September 10th, 2012 meeting of the East Central Gravity Drainage District. Madam Secretary, please note that uh, all members are present except Councilman Shakespeare and Councilman Cazzo. Would everyone please stand for the invocation by Councilman Lohr and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, as we gather tonight in the aftermath of Hurricane Isaac, we just ask for a special blessing on all those that were impacted by its path, both within our parish and within the state. We ask that you help them to pick up the pieces. And we also ask in the future that if there's anything that we can do and other local governments and, and agencies uh, that you help us guide us the, as we make those decisions. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chris. Uh, public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak on an agenda item, please sign in with the secretary and you'll be given time whenever that item comes up. Right now, the chair would entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the August 6, 2012 meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson and second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries. Right now, what we're going to do, based on uh, coming off of Hurricane Isaac, we're going to have Mr. Uh, we're going to combine the chairman's report and the drainage report. Mr. Rue is going to give us an overview of what we went through and what we look like. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. I'm going to start with the uh, Marvin Borough Pump Station. This is the construction side of the pump station during the event flood event that you can see is completely inundated and flooded uh, water is going across this back here is the um, is the outside of the pump station and water is coming in from that way into the the pump station itself again this is the same place as the uh, looking into the uh, front side of the the intake of the uh, pumping station Again, everything's flooded, water moving across. This is the site as it is today. Uh, I went out there and looked at it. They have everything pumped out. And again, this is the inside. All of this was flooded. As of today, it's almost back to uh, to normal, they have a little bit more cleaning to do at the bottom, but as you can see, they're in the process of forming up for the roadway, going across. Uh, they're just about back on schedule, uh, working uh, their normal uh, their normal process. So again, that's good news for everybody. They didn't; it wasn't anything that uh, was damaged, and they're back uh, back on the project. This is the aerial view of the of the uh, flood event during the event. And again, this is the site over here that actually was uh, flooded uh, going into the uh, front side of the pumping station. This is the rear. It's going to, across this back side right there. And it just gives you how uh, example of how high it was. This is a discharge from the pumps. It never re it was this high before. It never reached anywhere near the discharge elevation of the uh, of the pumps and at this point here it's, it's actually about three inches above that elevation. This is the, uh, the uh, north side of the pump station. As you can see it's about a foot, a foot and a half uh, from going all the way across. Now if it would have breached this, of course the other side would have breached even for, uh, more than this then that would have been a significant event because then we couldn't have controlled it at all and, and all the water or at least two feet of the water would completely inundate the front part of the pump station. This is the boat gate and you can see <clears throat> this is the front the pump, the suction side of the pumps. This is the back side you can see it within several inches of coming over the boat gate. Some of it's already across and under the, on the sides, entering into the pump uh, intake through uh, this area right through here. Um, 
what we're going to, in addition to uh, putting a berm on both sides of the pump station, uh, we're in the process of designing uh, a uh, actually an attachment to go onto the uh, boat bay that will raise it up to this level right here, about another foot and a half. And it's going to go all the way across and seal it, so that gives us a, at least another foot and a half to two feet of protection in case we get a, a same event again. Uh, go to the um, Henderson Bayou. Now, I don't have a picture of uh, the uh, site during the event, but I can tell you, you could not see the levee. The levee is completely underwater. Everything in this site right here was, was, nothing, was underwater all the way to the far side, uh, which is a 14 elevation over there. That whole area was one big lake. You couldn't see anything except water. This is how it looks today. Most of the water has been pumped out. They're starting to clean all of the structures for concrete. And we're hoping that uh, by uh, Thursday, all the water will be out of here and everything will be clean. And by Monday, they'll be back on the schedule of forming up uh, to pour more concrete. And uh, on this uh, backside, they'll be back to normal working. So they're going to lose about two weeks of work. Uh, but all in all, they're in pretty good shape and they're, they're making progress over there to get back to normal. And this is just another uh, picture of that site and the progress they've made and uh, where they're at as of today. So again, uh, both projects, uh, while it was a, um, a significant event at both places, they're moving forward and there's no permanent damage. And I think we will be back on schedule both uh, sites um, by, uh, by Monday. This is, we'll go to the other. Picture. This is the Frog Bayou Locks. This is the, during construction several weeks ago. This is how we started um, in, um, placing the covers. And this is how it is today. Uh, this is the, uh, we've got everything just about up to the top level of the box covers. We've got a concrete slab that's going to connect both head walls. Um, going on top of here, about a 12-inch slab with rebar, tying everything together. Uh, we hopefully we might be uh, we can pour that by the end of the week with good weather. Um, right now the elevation is high, it's about an eight on the front by your side, which is this area uh, to the left. And if we try to open it up right now, the elevation is actually higher than the floodgate, and it actually um, come through and flood the whole structure here. So we have to wait until the elevation in front by you gets down to about a five, and once it gets down to about a five. Then, and the elevation in, in, uh, in by Manshack gets lower than a five, then we can actually uh, open up this gate uh, on a temporary basis and start letting uh, more <coughs> flow from uh, Frog by you go through the locks and drain it down to a real low elevation. So in case we have another flood event, you know, we, at least we got that basin down pretty good. But we're progressing real well with this project also. I'm going to go to a summary of some of the things that went on uh, for us the, uh, during the event. Uh, we started pumping, all, turned all five pumps on at midnight on the 29th. That's that Wednesday. The elevation was 2.5 and a 4.6 on the outside. On 9 1, 5 p.m., we cut it down to 4. So that means that. We ran for 41 hours. We ran all five pumps, um, which was a, it's, it's really too much to run, uh, you know, at one time. We like to start swapping them out. So we, uh, you know, usually we only run four, three or four pumps to, during a normal event. And we actually able to cut one pump off, rotate it around. So all of them not continuously running uh, for the whole time. In this event here, again, we had to uh, run all five pumps for 41 hours straight. On 9-8, uh, which was uh, Saturday, we uh, had no, we turned all the pumps off, and we had a 1-7 on the inside and three on the outside. And today we were able to open up the gates and equalize it at a, about a 2-2 on both sides. The maximum elevation was uh, on the back side, according to our gauges, was uh, 6.27. We went back in historical records, and the only thing that we could find at the highest it had ever been was about a 4.8, and that's back uh, five, six years ago, something like this. So again, this is uh, for what we have records on, historic event. 
uh, the inside elevation, the max, it got up to a 3.3. Three, three, and um, but it stayed at about the 3.3 three for a, a good amount of time. Uh, the elevation rose from a 2.5 to a 3.3 three, three with all five pumps running. In other words, we were giving it everything we had and it was still gaining on us. When it got to about a 3.3, three, three, we were able to stabilize the, uh, the amount of water coming to us and some of the rain stopped, which helped us. Um, the elevation was sustained at about a 3 oh, uh, for over 24 hours with all five pumps running. So again, we were just holding our own at 3 oh with all five pumps running. The significance of all of this is the fact that uh, we were given everything we have. If one of the pumps would have failed with the amount of water coming up on the backside, a little bit of inundation uh, over the, uh, the size of the pump, it would have been uh, um, a, I guess, it, probably not catastrophic, but it would have been uh, a, a more of a flooding event within that basin because we just would not have been able to pour enough water out to keep the elevation in San Amal and other in AC and other places like that at a lower level. So that would have been significant flooding probably if that would have happened. Bay Conway, the max it got up to was about a 5.5 five, and today it's at 3.39. Uh, Amit River, uh, about 8.91 was ours. And the, some other reports said it was about a 9, but <coughs> our gauge just showed 8.91. Right now it's 2.89. <coughs> Bay Manshack was a 10.54. Uh, and uh, right now it's a 6.31. Alligator Bayou and, and Bluff Swamp both are about an eight, and that was the highest level they they uh, they they got to. And uh, right now they're still at eight. This is the highest, and a lot of this means it's because uh, Saint Gabriel and those areas and the upper regions of uh, Spanish Lake has actually finished draining down to us. Uh, the Bluff Swamp and the area around Alligator Bayou. Uh, it's the lowest part of that whole basin, and everything's finally getting down there and stacking up. It's causing some problems in the Bluff Swamp area around Clown Peter and Ridge Road. Uh, the water is just staying in their backyards. What we're hoping to do, like I mentioned uh, a, a minute ago, is to um, get Alligator Bayou locks. Well, first, let me say that the Alligator Bayou locks were open today, this afternoon. Uh, so some of that's draining out. As soon as the elevation in, uh, Alligator Bayou gets down to about a six. Then we're going to open up the three culverts that's crossing in Bluff uh, on Bluff Levee and allows the top levels of Bluff Swamp to drain into Alligator Bayou. When Alligator, when Bluff Swamp or Frog Bayou gets down, like I said, to about a five or so, uh, by the end of the week, uh, we'd be far enough along with the floodgate at uh, Frog Bayou to be able to temporarily open it and drain the Bluff Swamp even down, uh, further down to get it as low as possible. So in case we get another event, we were, we were pretty protected. Um, the structural flooding, uh, as the, the information that we have so far, we had about 40 structures that were flooded. That's coming from OEP and from, from, from our engineering section. Uh, that's not uh, set in stone. It's just most of that's reported. It haven't been verified yet, and they're in the process of doing that right now. Okay. So this, I want to show you something now that the engineering department helped put together for me. This is actually the map, inundation map of the parish. This is at a, um, let me see here. This is at about a six elevation. And again, it, it got a little bit higher than that. This is, let me see if I get this thing working right there. This is our pumping station right here. Now the map doesn't take into account our levee system, protective levee system. So this is what would have happened if, uh, if the uh, storm surge uh, was actually within our, our flood uh, protection basin. Because again, they don't take into account our levees. But it shows, this is our pumping station here. All of this area here is levied off and from this point here all the way up to Gonzales. This here is the, um, is the Sorrento area, and I don't know if you can see it on there. Bill, yes. just a second. Could you just yep. put your marker on Highway 44? Okay, can you see the marker there? I'm having a little time. Uh, 
It's basically the straight the straight line will little curve and it runs straight yeah, up from this, the and again the my, I don't have the right uh, cursor. Just, to, just to give an idea of where it's at. But the uh, this is uh, this is US sixty one right here going through uh, Sorrento and all. If you can see that marker right through there. Um, this area through here again is Sorrento. Bay Conway goes up through and hit Brittany Street. And this is the Tuye community, Tuye uh, Road community over on the uh, kind of a lower center. What basically happened was the storm surge came up to the, our protection levee, could not go through the protection levee, start circling around towards Sorrento through this area. Uh, Highway 22 and the interstate is all uh, acts as a levee system. So it kind of hit the LA-22 area, could not go through there, start circling around under I-10. There's only two ways it can go through under I-10 is the Tuye Ditch, that goes to the Tuye Road community, and by Conway. And so, but that's what really what happened was the reason, for the reason that the Tuye uh, Road community was uh, pretty hard hit was actually is going under the interstate through the Tuye Ditch, and we could not stop it. We do have plans to to, uh, to solve that problem with a flap gate uh, we, that we're in the process of of, uh, of engineering right now. But it went through there, and it went through um, Conway Bayou into the other side, the south side of the interstate. Once it got to the south side of the interstate, it could not go any further than Highway 70. Highway 70 acted as a um, as a levy there. So it filled up everything up to 22 LA 70, and then it starts circling back around going south towards St. James, following uh, I-10 and airline, both of them acting as a levy, and LA 70 and getting to, I think it's 3125, the, the road going to, uh, through St. James. All of that acting as a levy, so it circled around and started going south. It could not go any, any more to the north. Uh, the only other way it had to get to the north was through uh, Conway Bayou. And it went through Conway Bayou and hit Brittany Street and started crossing over Brittany Street. And once it gets into the uh, north side of Brittany Street, north of, of uh, Sorrento, then it actually was high enough to get into our pumping system. It crosses under airline and goes into Bayou Francois. Part of the reason we had a hard time pumping down the system is because we were actually pumping water out of Bayou Conway because it crossed over and got into our pumping system on that end, uh, all along the, uh, the north side of Brittany Street. And that's another reason. Brittany Street had a, a pretty hard time. It's because of the backwater flooding from Conway and, uh, and not being able to get out because it's starting to, uh, to build up in Francois, so it collected uh, in and around the, the Brittany Street area. So that's pretty you know, straightforward what happened with the uh, Oh, excuse me, with the system and why some of these communities were hard hit while others weren't. One of the things that we, everybody should take note of and the, the benefits of our uh, pumping system and the benefits of our levy. If in fact this what shows all the center port between our two protection levies all the way to Gold Place Road all along Airline Highway to Gonzales on Francois, all this center port is, is what would have flooded uh, without a protection levy and just from the storm surge, now this is not taking into account any rainfall coming to it. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that without that protection levy and in the pumping system, uh, the flooding in AC and, um, and Santa Mall all the way to Gold Place Road would have been significant. I would, I would say halfway to houses, if not more. And we had significant flooding all the way through Gonzales. And we're not saying, I'm not say, uh, talking about inches, I'm talking about feet of flooding all through the Gonzales area and, and, and uh, Black Bayou area and every, everything in between. So uh, the, the pumping system and this protection levy really saved everything inside this protection levy system. And it wouldn't have been for that, it would have been really a devastating event, much more than what it really was. So again, that's uh, just a little uh, overview of what happened, in, in our opinion, uh, how it happened, and, and some of the results of uh, where we're at now. Right now, I'd like to allow the parish president to give us a synopsis of, I think,
First of all, I just want to take on behalf of all, all the council here, thank all the departments for responding and staying on board 24-7 through everything. Everybody, everybody worked long hours. Well, I, I just want to echo that, Randy. I think everybody uh, pitched in and it was a team effort and uh, I think that's basically why we minimized uh, the damage that we had. But what it did show us, this event did show us that we have some weaknesses and that we have some work to do. And, uh, you know, I think it's imperative that we as a group uh, work on a regional basis uh, with the parishes below us to uh, come up with a plan that uh, will not only protect uh, the people of Ascension, but uh, St. James, St. John, St. Charles. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's imperative that we need to look at is uh, certainly uh, trying to get all of our levee system to the 100 year flood uh, level. Uh, I think we had discussed that. We were, we were thinking about doing the, the part. Uh, existing levy, uh, but it, with the new one that we're looking at, uh, I think maybe it would be smart to go ahead and build it up to the 100 mm -hmm. year level and start working backwards toward the uh, the other end and, and try to get it that way. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to be a challenge here in the near future. We adding another pump, uh, I think more so not to pump more, but for safety reasons in the event uh, one of our other pumps, uh, 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 one of the five pumps go down or the four pumps that we generally run and probably going to end up having to uh, add another one uh, for safety reasons also to, to have that. Uh, we, as Bill said, we need to uh, look at a storm surge. Uh, this was uh, historic, but this is not really the big one. Uh, as I, I tell people when I go out and I talk to them, our pump system and levy systems uh, for a five-year to ten-year flood, it's not for for a Category 4 or 5 uh, hurricane coming up uh, Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Marpa, and coming with a 10 to 15 foot surge because at that point it's going to overtop uh, the pump station and that will have uh, a lot of Ascension Parish, as Bill just mentioned, uh, with flood. Also, it probably uh, answers a lot of questions uh, to the citizens as to why they need flood insurance when they've never flooded before. I think this is a good example. It was a, a good exercise and uh, in showing that what could happen if those pumps are over topped. Uh, there's going to be several homes all the way from uh, Santa Mon coming up the airline uh, highway, I think, toward the Prairieville area that's going to flood. And if you look at the people that's required to have flood insurance, uh, those are the people that uh, we're talking about. So, again, it's, uh, it, it costs you a little bit to have it. But I can assure you that uh, you'll feel a heck of a lot better if uh, an event like this ever occurs. So, but I, again, want to thank everyone involved uh, with this effort. I think it was a it was a, a good effort, and I think a lot of people, uh, uh, Bill, Ronnie, uh, our entire crew, and council, and sheriff, and uh, you know, you 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 can't single out anyone. It's just it was just a, a good working event, and everybody worked well together. So, thank you. Yeah, just to give an overview, basically, uh, you know, if you start start down at the mouth of the river and start working your way up, that uh, Plaquemines Parish, they, they, they really got hit hard, all right? Uh, New Orleans was spared to, for the most part. They've had some improvements in that area in the last <coughs> five years. Um, coming up, St. Charles has had a has has did some work in the past to improve their their situation. Uh, St. John, I know that there was a proposal back in 2002, I think, for St. John, and uh, I'm sure that they're taking another look at that right now. Uh, St. James has uh, has had some things in the works, uh, nothing concrete, I don't believe, right now. But there, there's a basically a, a project on board that has been looked at, and it's uh, being handled by the Punch Train Levy District, I think, and being proposed and working with the Corps of Engineers for the West Shore project that'll come all the way up those three parishes and link into our Marvin Bro pump station and kind of build a fence there and uh, basically save I-10 and Airline Highway. One of our worst fears, uh, sometimes we flood a home, but the, but the sad thing is when somebody's somewhere we can't get a hold to them or they need some kind of attention. And uh, the, the, the one that... Uh, I want to particularly thank, because I had some, some people close to me involved in, was uh, the National Guard. 
And uh, you may have not seen the biggest presence here, but they've, uh, some of your local folks right here were, were involved in about five different parishes. So that, you know, going up, we have projects in store that we've been working on for a long time. Some of you guys, like Todd and all y'all that have been around for a while, and Dempsey and some of you folks, that, uh, you know, that we're, we're making some improvements. And I do believe, like Tommy said, this is the time for all, all folks to come to the table and see what we can do for the long term. There's, there's a very, uh, we, we stayed with the pumps. I sandbagged my house very high in 1983, and we stayed with the pumps for a long time. And we got very comfortable with them, you know. Well, we, we lost some houses inside the, inside the New River Basin where we had the pumps, okay. Um, you know, I think we got, the project we got going now is bays number six and seven at Marvin Bro, but and pump number six only. Put another pump, you're talking somewhere between three and four million dollars. So these, these pumps are highly engineered, they're long lead time, and they're, they're not cheap. And, uh, and for good reason, because you got five of them that have been there for a good while, and they performed very, very well under the, under the stress they were under. And uh, so anyway, I would like to just open it up to the floor of anybody, any of the council members, anybody? Todd? Yeah, uh, we, we talked about putting this six pump in. We had a lot of controversy with some of the councils in the early mm -hmm. stages of talking about it. And I, I sat at the pumping station many times and seen all five pumps running and water level climbing. I think uh, Bill talked about five or six years ago. Yeah. I was there, one mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning, and the level was climbing, but it was still controversy on this six pump. So the six pump was needed, and I thank the council that you know approved these pumps to, to increase the capacity over there because it definitely needed and and the citizens of this parish just don't realize what effort bill allen and the drainage department and the whole entire staff what it takes to operate these pumps and it's just you don't have to see it back there and it's just yeah. hard to get back there when it happens but uh, it's just a lot of work and it's a lot of coordination and uh you got to commend these guys uh, that they are uh they, they put it together and uh saved a lot of people you know and uh I want to commend them in the public because they, they do a great job when it comes to coordinate this effort, and it is a big effort. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Todd. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Bill, Pepsi Lambert. Also, would you, uh, the effect on the lake, what we had talked about earlier, exactly how much um, getting approved, uh, the approved, uh, from the core with this extra pump, um, what was the effect of us pumping out on the uh, into the lake? It was in the hundreds of a foot. It wasn't much. And I think uh, Henry with BKI did some analysis on it. Henry, can you quote some exact numbers from your model? Well, He's asking you to quote, Henry. Yeah, <laughs> you quote. <laughs> we, uh, part of the process when we, did the permit application to get the sixth and seventh pump approved by the Corps of Engineers, we had to demonstrate that our improvements wouldn't impact others. The Corps asked us to compute how much increase in volume or water depth we were going to affect all the way from Ascension over to St. John Parish. Uh, what I replied back to them was a more appropriate analysis would be from the Amy Diversion Channel to Blind River uh, looking along those areas because once it hits those channels it's going to flow out to more more directly. With just that reduced area the the pump station running on the Rita event which was 36 hours it would have raised and, and not allowing any of the water to leave that area. If it was all stuck in that area and didn't leave, it would raise the water levels nine hundredths of a foot. And that would be for a 36-hour time period. And that was 2,000 CFS increase. So the impacts of the existing pump station over that area is not significant either. Uh, you're talking an inch. The entire pump system at 7,000 CFS in the future, you could be talking three or four inches. Very good. That's, that's what I wanted out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Any other questions? Any other comments? All right. Bill, we uh, based on the, uh, what we'd seen, I think you're putting together a list of areas, like you'd said earlier, I just want to ensure everyone that what we see in an event like this, we see things that we got to go take care of. Like you said, the two-year ditch. Mm -hmm. When we walked it down on the interstate about three times and back and forth and everything. Uh, but we still got to look at all the areas. And when we see this rain event, we, we see things happen. Uh, we were lucky. Uh, I didn't personally believe USGS when they said that uh, the A-meet was going to crest at 9. I thought everybody was getting the rain that we were getting. We had people with rain gauges that uh, 20 inches that overfilled, okay? When the rain is blowing sideways at 35 to 40 miles an hour, it doesn't look like as much rain to you as, as sometimes as it does when it's just falling flat on, you, on your driveway, okay, in a hard rain. But it dumped a lot of rain on us. This is a very, very significant rain event. And I think the last band that came through, it was kind of a changing point for us. We was catching some ground and then we, we may have lost a little bit. But all the improvements that we gotta continue to do and uh, the people in, in the unprotected areas, uh, all up uh, from Lake Morton all the way up through past Gold, from Gold Place Road north. Uh, the, the low crest of the, of the Amit River worked in our favor. And I, I'm not saying it's real low at nine feet, but I surely would have thought that we'd have had 11 footer on our hands, 10 to 11. So that, that worked in our favor, good. I want to just, uh, I think that just real briefly, I'm not gonna give any commentary on it, but we've been hearing about the Amit, the Comet, excuse me, the Comet Diversion Project to divert the water from the Comet River to the uh, Mississippi River that we feel that will significantly lower the crest of the Amit River at Port Benson and on down through, through our parish. Uh, just since that event, uh, there's been a heightened awareness of it and a lot of people talking about where that project's going. I got some word today that, uh, that we have a company, that engineering company, that's made some significant uh, strides in that to, to get that moving going. And I hope, hope to see within the next month or two that we see some kind of report of that happening based on the fact that we pay into that tax base for those, you know, for that improvement on up there. So I just wanted to touch base on that. And that pretty much covers all the projects that we got going, what we got in the pretty future much. and where we stand right now. So any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Rue. You got anything else? Only the administration is looking at uh, those few problems we touched down before. We are looking at ways of, uh, of handling that situation if, if uh, confronted with the same type storm. And that being the, uh, the extra amount of water coming in to, uh, across Brittany Road from Conway, how we can handle that with extra pump, it is possible. And how we can prevent and dam some of that water off from going under the interstate uh, to some of the areas. So that's in progress right now, and we should have that within the next uh, few weeks, something to uh, actually being done to, uh, to stop that from happening in the yeah. future. Just a quick note, Councilman Shakes not a good make it tonight, but we definitely find, got to find some way to get more water to the Sorrento pumping station there in this, type, that's, of that's in this another, type of event. That's another thing we're looking at, how to tie in that pump station to, to actually uh, take water out of uh, areas uh, to the north and west of Sorrento when, in fact, there's no more rain within that, uh, the Sorrento area. We can actually divert water and bring it into the system. So we are looking at that, too. Thank you, sir. With that being said, we'll move on to agenda item number seven, change order number one, Sorrento Pump Station Rehabilitation Project. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. We're asking approval for change order number one. What it is is a change in the scope of work, and we're changing the scope of work so that we can, we, we really uh, were concerned about the amount of time that uh, that pump station be out of, of uh, order 
and it concerned us that we went back to the drawing and, uh, to the table and look at uh, designing something that would take less time. And the results of that was uh, an increase uh, from $84,450 uh, to $112,115, which is an increase of $27,665 to the original contract. But what it does do is reduce it from 30 days, uh, 26 days, a 30 day construction time to four days. And it also uh, enables us not to require a pump for 30 days to pump the system in case we get a storm event because we won't be able to utilize the pump station. And so the, the rent on the pump would have been 35000 for that the Central Parish uh, government would have to pay. So really it's a, it's a, a reduction of about $5,000, uh, $6,000 from the total amount of the project. But the, but the significant number is the reducing the number of days from 30 to four days. And what we're doing is waiting to all, all the, um, the, the uh, uh, all of the uh, supplies is on site. And we have a prediction of uh, several days or a week or more of good weather. Then the contract, contract will mobilize, we'll pump it down, get in there, do the work, get out. So it is something that benefit us and, and safe, safeguard uh, Sorrento if in case we get a flood event. And uh, we're asking for approval of that change order. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. A motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. I just want to clarify and touch base. One of the places uh, Mr. Rue explained earlier that we haven't been able to give much help for in this uh, I don't think we've, we're losing anybody, but uh, they're not seeing their water go down is the bluff swamp. And just to clarify that, that we, they, are, they should be getting a little bit of relief based on the alligator bayou being open right now. And when we reach a point in a week or so, we should be able to give them some relief on frog bayou, right? That's correct. Thank you, sir. With that being said, I'll move on to agenda item number eight. Mr. Lambert. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert to second. adjourn. We have a second by Mr. Brian Malonson. Any opposition? We are adjourned.